record the lectures and I post them to YouTube. All right, that way, if, you know, being wintertime and all, if, you, you, you know, if you're snowed in somewhere or if you're, you, you got the flu or whatever and you miss a class, you have the opportunity to watch the video for it. Um, and at least you get that material. Um, in addition, some people have indicated to me even that they've reviewed. Uh, if there was something particularly fuzzy about a class, they would uh, review the, the video recording of it as well. So, you know, I think there's a lot of advantages to doing that. And I make them available, and, and people that aren't even in this class watch uh, the video sometimes, which, you know, is great. Good for them. All right. <laughs> what we're going to do today is I'm going to uh, take attendance. All right, we'll do that, just so that um, the, there's a mix of people, some of which I know, some of which I don't know. So uh, give me a chance to, to meet the people that I, I don't know. Uh, we'll talk about the, the general information about the, the class and the requirements and how it's going, what it's going to be like and all that. And then we'll start uh, discussing multimedia. All right. Let me run through quickly and take attendance. Scott Baker, Michael Carver, Susan Dean, Nicholas Donardo, Nick is fine. Okay, I was just going to say that. Someone, um, Zenobia Fountain, okay. Anna Gibbs, Hope Hammond. Lamont Hitchens, James Huber, Leanne Hudson, okay. Matthew Hilo, Charles Joseph, Bridget Crane, Mark Osco, ja Jennifer Silva, Christine Toth, um, have you all used the course management system Angel? For, okay, so I won't necessarily talk about how to use Angel, but I'll talk again specifically about what what's out there um, for this class. suggest, first of all, I would suggest that you, a couple times through the week, between classes, check Angel to see if I've posted anything, because um, that's a place I'll post this, uh, announcements. Uh, on occasion, someone will ask me a question that I don't know the answer to, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll usually find it out before the next class and post it there, or if I was going to be ill and, and miss a class, I'd post it there, so just check periodically. Uh, between classes a couple times. Uh, it's a good way to communicate. It's a way that you'll turn everything in and it's a way you'll get your grade back. So you can see the grade that you got and, and, and go from there. Um, most of the stuff in Angel, uh, the most relevant tab is a content tab. We'll go over that one and uh, the rest of them assume you kind of have a grip on how they work. So let's look at the content tab. This class I've organized a little bit different than um, some of my other classes. Uh, this class sort of is a set of small units that are hooked together. There are five or six small units hooked together that, that form the class. So I have, and there's no textbook for this class. So um, it's tough, you know, I, I looked at a number of textbooks for this class. And given the range of stuff that we cover, it's tough to find a textbook that would really hit all the topics well. All right? Um, and rather than buying a textbook that you would only partly use or something along those lines, I decided it would just be better 
not to have a textbook period. And I've come up with some materials, and we can add to these materials if you find a good resource. Um, so think of the materials as being your replacement textbook, the materials uh, folder. Now, your view is going to be a little different than mine, all right? If we look at the materials tab, um, actually these last five are not enabled yet, so you will not be able to see those. All right, they show up on mine because I'm working on them. All right, right now we have two of the units, two out of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units uh, enabled, so you can be able to read these. All these units work about the same insofar as I will have in there a list of documents along with some resources that you should read. Consider this like your textbook reading. So the stuff that we cover here uh, is important. For today's class being an introduction and an overview, we have sort of the basic things that, that typically start out with the class. Uh, the syllabus, a handout that I have, the rest is a uh, is sort of the introductory material of the class that we'll get on the second half of class today and maybe a little bit next time. So this is probably the shortest of all units. It really is more of a half unit than anything. If we look in the other unit that's, that's enabled, animation, you'll notice that I have some readings, some discussion questions, uh, some examples, some tutorials, and some examples that I, uh, I used in previous uh, sections of this class. Um, and it looks like they're not enabled, so I'll real quick enable them. No, they are. They are enabled. All right. But anyhow, for example, in the readings, I have some background information about animation, some of the terminology involved. I have some discussion questions that will uh, that, that that we can uh, talk about collectively, and I have some animation examples that we can look at. So again, consider these things to be like the textbook. Um, go over the readings uh, in each section as they become available, um, and. Then I have, for example, for an, uh, animation, I have some tutorials. I have links to some of the to uh, tutorials that are already available about Adobe. All right, so you can go and watch these. Interesting thing about this class is, given that it's a multimedia class, I think it's appropriate for me to use multimedia in the class. All right? I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Uh, if I'm going to talk about it, and if, I, if my claim is, is that by using multimedia, we can be more effective than just something like, you know, a more traditional media, like a, like a book or something like that, then I should be able to demonstrate that in my classes. So that's sort of another reason. Uh, a third uh, reason is, you know, uh, you'll save some money and you'll be able to afford gas to come here. <laughs> All right? So uh, at any rate... Consider these to be the replacement for the textbook, the, 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 the units that are in the material section. And again, when we go over the syllabus, we'll see how long each unit takes. Each unit takes approximately two, three weeks, something along those lines. All right? Okay. You have a folder for your assignments, and each assignment has its own folder. The only one that's, that's enabled right now is the basic animation one. And we won't look at this right now because we're not going to talk about animation today, but it is available and you can preview it if you want and, and see um, when it's, uh, when it's uh, due and what you need to do. Now, every assignment is in two phases, all right? This is, this is uh, a, an important uh, key point in this class especially, but I try to stress in all my classes, is really to do anything. To do any sort of project that involves software design or web design or multimedia design, really there's two phase of, phases of it. There's first of all deciding what you're going to do, and then there's going out and doing it. And you need both those skills to be successful, right? If you 
simply are a technical whiz and you know how to create animations, but you don't have any sense for what's going to be an effective animation for the problem that you're trying to solve, then the work that you come might be dazzling, might look interesting, but ultimately isn't going to communicate what you want it to communicate. Now, if the reverse is true, you might have some great ideas of, of really good animations that will really add value to a website, but if you don't have the technical skills to then go ahead and implement those plans, that's no good either. So every assignment is uh, comprised of a design phase and a creation phase. All right. um, we'll review this after we've talked a little more about animation. Um, but again, there's always two parts to that, always two parts to every assignment. Part of your grade is comprised uh, of journal entries that you'll make, where you will look at how some organizations are using multimedia to communicate their organization's message. All right? So for each of the units, we have you to go out to a site and, and essentially review it and talk about maybe how they could use it more effectively, talk about what you like about it, talk about what you don't like. One thing to keep in mind is you're supposed to find businesses or other organizations that are using a technology, not a site about the technology. For example, YouTube would not be a good choice for the video site, even though you say, hey, YouTube for video. Well, YouTube isn't an organization that's trying to convey a message using videos, right? YouTube, that's their business. You might look at, for example, um, you know, just pick something, uh, pick uh, Nike. For example, if you went to Nike's website, they probably have videos. You could look at that and, uh, and assess, do you think that they're using videos effectively? Maybe they're using them effectively, maybe they're not. Watch, I'll get, I'll get 18 reviews of Nike now. All right? uh, <laughs> uh, at least that'll be better than getting 18 reviews of YouTube, I guess. All right? Your first assignment is due a week from the day, and it's really straightforward. It's simply to create an online journal and to create a first entry that just talks a little bit about yourself. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can look at that and, and, and read it, and, and if you have any questions, uh, we can review it. The first journal entry is due um, <laughs> the 16th, so it's due like a week from the day. Shouldn't take you more than 20 minutes to do it, but just sort of a nice icebreaker to get things going and to get you familiar with it. If any of you have already used online journals in the past, this will be a breeze. If you haven't, it'll still be a breeze. All right, so this is a pretty easy one. The rest of the journal entries you will do, um, you can really do essentially any time throughout the term. My suggestion to you is not to wait to the end to do them all, all right, for a couple reasons. Uh, one thing I do in this class, and I do in most all of my classes, is I give the opportunity to rework assignments. All right? So, for example, if I asked you to, if one of the journal entry assignments were, was to review video, and you didn't really do a good job of it, you, you know, you, you, you weren't really complete, and, and you, you know, you, you were kind of vague or whatever, I'm liable to give you partial credit for it and ask you to redo it. All right? And the advantage of getting things done quickly is that you have more opportunity to go back and redo them if it doesn't work. So if you wait to the last week and turn everything in the last week, okay, I'm not going to take any points off, at least for this. However, you do lose the opportunity to rework it if there's an issue with it. So, um, and plus at the end of the semester, um, you probably have bigger things to worry about than this. These journal entries, again, are, are um, not terribly difficult to do, you just have to do them. You just have to put in the time to find a site, spend some time thinking about it, thinking about the use. In this first document here, I have a list of what I want the journal entries to be. And you're not allowed to see that list because I don't know why. Every time this comes up and I hit cancel and then the document appears, I, I really don't get what's going on. Your first journal entry is this one, where you go in, 
Um, I do have a, decla uh, a disclaimer that um, you, the, the journal uh, that you're going to create, the online journal you'll create, is available to the public. I mean, people will be able to see it. Therefore, I would suggest, you know, uh, you know, protecting your privacy. You know, use maybe instead of your complete name, maybe just your first name or your first uh, name and the last initial or your initials or a pseudonym or, you know, William Gates. I don't really care as long as I know it's who it is that's, that's posting to that URL. Now, 2 through 20, uh, or 2 through 10, rather, of the, the journal entries, Journal entry two is about typography. Journal entry three is about images. Journal entry four is about sound, and so on down the line. The last three journal entries, you look at the overall multimedia of a site, so you consider all the factors. You might go again to a Nike site, for example, and comment. How do they use images? How do they use audio? Do they use audio? And remember, you're, you know, very few examples that you're going to find are either going to be completely great or completely horrible. Right? Most of the examples you find, you're going to find some things that you like about them, some good things that you like about them, and some things that you think could be improved. You know. Also remember that a site doesn't necessarily have to use all multimedia to be effective. You, know, you might not be able to find any audio on Nike's site, for example. Maybe there's simply video and images, but no animations or audio. All right? That's not necessarily bad. You know, part of your job in reviewing it is saying, did they pick the correct multimedia elements? Did they put together the right things to communicate their message? Okay? So that's sort of the last, actually, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's actually the last four journal entries. All right. The first one is the only one with a due date, though, so I would suggest you look at that one, um, you know, as soon as you can. Yeah, you, in other words, what you do is you go to a site like Blogger, for example, uh, or WordPress or LiveJournal, there's any number of them, and you create a site and you just make posts, you know, you have a total of 10 posts to that site. Even if you already have a blog, I would suggest you create one just for this class, just for the simple reason of it, it'll just make it easier for everyone, you know. I won't, <laughs> you know, I won't look... Uh, and, and read an entry about your uncle's surprise party and think it's your review about videos or something, all right, if you have a personal blog. So just to keep it separate and to keep it straightforward, um, you know, I'd create one. And, yeah, every one of your posts will go to the same, uh, to the same uh, blog, to the same journal. There is a project for this class, and... We're not going to really talk about that today, other than to say, like every other assignment, it's done in two phases, all right, a, a design and then a completed uh, project. And to say that uh, you should read through this material, because sometime within the first couple of weeks, we'll talk about it in more detail in class. And it's better if you've read through it um, than not to have read through it, all right? I'm going to spend the rest of the time going over as much of this introductory material as I can. But to summarize, what you should do between now and, you know, what you should do this week is review the introductory material. The assignments you can wait on, because your first assignment really is to create that journal entry, so review that and post that journal entry. And then lastly, read through the project and maybe start thinking about what you want to do even for the project. All right, let's look at these materials. Start with the syllabus. Not going to read every line of the syllabus to you, but I'll, I'll hit the, the high points. Here's different contact information to, to contact me. Um, one thing I would say is, in general, it's better to email me than to phone me, all right? Because I check my email real frequently. I, I check my phone really only when I'm on campus. So it's better to leave an email than to leave a voicemail message. But obviously, you know, if circumstances prevent you from leaving an email, uh, that's my phone number listed there. You can either send me an email through Angel or through my 
regular Lion community email address. Really doesn't matter one way or another. Right? Generally speaking, I'll get back to you within a day or so, give or take, to any email that you ask. In fact, if I don't, it doesn't hurt, and I don't mind at all if you send like another note saying, hey, did you happen to see the email I sent? Just in case it, it slipped through the cracks, you know. Um, I'm pretty good, and I'm usually pretty on top of my email, but on occasion, like, like everyone else, you know, being human, things will slip through the cracks. All right, course descriptions, student outcomes, all this stuff is important for you to read, but I'm not going to read it to you. You can take the time and read that. Text materials, there's no textbook required, and so on. There are some other resources, and we'll talk about this more in each section or each unit, but digital cameras, digital video cameras, software, video editing software, that we'll talk about. And if you don't have a digital camera, for example, there's ones that you can borrow, and there's ones that you can borrow that take video, too. They're not high-end cameras by any means, but they're good enough for you to get the assignment done. All right? It's not as though we're making Hollywood feature movies, so if it's not a perfect camera uh, recording it, it's not like it's going to take off on your grade. I want to make sure that you understand how to use video editing software and how you understand to think through in a creative video this good, more so than the, the, very, you know, the high quality uh, recording of it. So if you don't have any of these things, that's fine. I can get one for you, or, or we'll figure something out. Uh, much of the software that's, that, that's to be used in this class will be free or open source. However, if you have stuff of your own, you're welcome to use it. For example, you don't have to use my digital camera. You don't have to use the software that I'm going to talk about. If you, for example, own a particular piece of software and you want to use that for your video processing, that's fine. I'm more interested in the outcome, in, in that you can create a video more so than learning how to use a particular piece of software. Now, to be sure, we're going to use certain software and we'll talk about them, but again, you're, you're welcome to use uh, your own. One thing I do in this class, and actually I do in all my classes, is you're welcome to come to one of my other classes' labs if you have additional questions. All right? So, for example, our lab goes right after this class. It starts at at 2 and it goes to 250. Uh, by the way, typically I'll need to leave right at 250. So if you have questions, don't wait until 249. All right? But at any rate, unless I, unless I otherwise state, figure I'm leaving right there, I have to pick up my kid and all that. All right. That being said, if you have questions, that we can't get to in lab, and, and I can't answer all your questions, or you're working between classes on an assignment and you just don't get something, you're welcome to come to one of my other classes' labs. All right? Conversely, people in my other classes, I'm going to invite to this class's lab. So people are allowed to come in, and that sort of gives you an extra opportunity to ask questions if you run into it. I've done this the past several semesters, and it generally works out pretty well. I really haven't had any, any issues like where I get swamped by 100 people in one lab and no one shows up for another. You know, It's pretty well balanced. So that's an extra opportunity for you to ask questions. So within the class, you can ask questions. Within the lab, you can ask questions. If you need additional help, you can either see me during my office hours or you can come to another class's lab. If uh, you want to do that, if you feel the need for that, you know, send me an email and, and we can talk about where my classes are and, and, and what times they meet and where they're going to be and, and that sort of thing. My office hours are listed at the top of this, by the way. Um, it is effective week two. So this week I will not necessarily be there during those office hours. I might be, but there's no guarantee. These are effective week two. I thought I put that on the syllabus, but I guess I didn't. All right, instructor's approach. Read this, very carefully worded. Won a Pulitzer, I think, in the syllabus uh, division. Um, the important thing to realize, uh, to sort of summarize this, is this is your class. This isn't my class. You know? 
I would joke, uh, we used to joke with another instructor, you know, did you cover such and much, such material? And, you know, a teacher might say, yeah, I covered it. I don't know if the class got it or not. Well, that's not a good attitude, right? Um, I'm not here simply to talk about something um, and, and to, to spend 50 minutes of time. I'm here, I'm here to go over something that, that, that'll, that'll sink in and it'll catch and that you'll understand. So please ask questions in class, in lab, in another class's lab, via email. I don't care how, just ask them. If you have the questions, ask them. I want to give every opportunity. There's an old teacher proverb that says, chances are if one student has a question, that there's probably other students in the class that have the same question, that just are too shy to raise their hand or whatever. So if you have a question, you know, this isn't that big of a class. Look around. There's probably a couple other people that have that question. It's worthwhile to take a minute and, and answer. Now, for whatever reason, if maybe you're asking a question that, that's specific to something you're working on for this class, maybe, or if it's something that kind of is uh, outside of the scope of this class, I may tell you that we'll discuss that in lab one-on-one, -on -one, all right, if, if I don't think the whole class would benefit from the discussion. But don't edit, edit yourself. Ask the question and let me make the call if, if it's worthwhile for the whole class to discuss or uh, if I want to hand it to you uh, individually. All right. Here are just some general college policies. Late work. I am a little more flexible than probably most instructors have as far as late work. All right. In my mind, that comes at a cost. All right. And we'll talk about the cost uh, in, in a second here. But generally speaking, if I'm working with a student, that is, if students are asking me questions, sending me emails, talking to me in lab, and you turn something in late, there's a good chance there won't be any deductions. Where I deduct for lateness is when, and again, this literally happens, week one, students in class don't see them again until week seven, and then they turn in the first lab. Well, I'm not, you know, I have to deduct for that, right? Um, if no effort was made to discuss with me what the issue was or the confusion or if there were some, you know, extraordinary circumstances that they, they were in a hospital or whatever, the student made no effort to meet me halfway on that, then, then I think that they deserve the, the late penalty, all right? But for the students that attend and ask questions and show up to lab, I'm usually very flexible about the late uh, late. Now, here's the cost of that, though. All right? The cost of that, number one, you, by, by turning it in late, you have, you know, you're going to start to fall behind, potentially, and you're going to limit your opportunities to rework stuff, all right? especially as we get closer to the end of the semester. All right? um, I feel very strongly that by giving you sort of the flexibility on the lateness, that allows me maybe to hold you to a higher standard on the quality of work, all right? So in other words, okay, turn it in a day late, but when you turn it in a day late, make sure it's good, all right? And I think that's a fair trade-off for you. And if you fall a little bit short, I may ask you, gee, can you, can you please reward that? So I, I want to have good work out of this class. This class has no exams. It's all assignment or project-based. So I want to make sure you do a great job on all of these, all right? Whatever we do, I want to make sure that you do really well. So I'll be a little, flexibility on the, I'll be a little flexible on the deadlines, but the cost of that is, is I want to expect that, that you're going to do a, a, a great job on this, all right? Some more general policies. Please read through these. Here's what your grade's going to comprise of. You have those 10 journal entries that are each worth a point. You have these 60 assignments or mini projects, if you will. 60 points worth, rather, not 60 assignments. Uh, you have six of these mini projects, each 